Do you need an MRI of your knee? We have a sports medicine orthopedic surgeon here to help us answer that question. I'm Dr. Paul Zalza. I'm Dr. Brad Weening. Welcome to Talking With Docs. And our guest today, Tim Deacon. All right. Um, sports medicine orthopedic surgeon. You've made a career out of the knee, haven't you? Yes, I have. Everything about the knee. Um, I try to know everything about the knee. OK, yeah. good. So the question we want to answer today for our viewers is, do they need an MRI of their knee? And when is that indicated? Because the problem is, everyone thinks they need an MRI of the knee. So we're going to talk about what you do before the MRI, when an MRI is indicated, and the findings, what they actually mean, and do you have to do anything about them? So let's start at the beginning. So someone has knee pain, they come to the office. Uh, let's start before that. What is an MRI? Okay. MRI is an imaging technique that does not use radiation, ionizing radiation. So no x-rays, no none of those high energy photons. It's basically, you go into a large magnet, your body goes into a magnetic field, then there's a radio frequency wave comes in and it aligns the protons, right? And you need the protons in the water. So you need to have the water in your tissues gets excited, and that helps create an image within a magnetic field. But it's completely safe, right? Right. No radiation, not like an x-ray uh, or a CT scan. Right. Um, but so going back to the question, do you need an MRI? Uh, the most important thing is to have a good history and physical examination done. That is the most important thing in making a diagnosis of what's going on in your knee. Okay. Um, MRI is helpful, but it's not the most important thing. X-ray is just as important. People have to get an X-ray first after the history and physical are done, and then they may need an MRI after that. It's very important that waiting for an MRI does not delay having an adequate history and physical examination done to help with the diagnosis. Okay, so history is when the doctor asks you a bunch of questions or the healthcare provider asks you a bunch of questions about what happened. Physical examination is where they actually lay hands on your knee, try and do some specific tests to see what's going on. And then after that, we order investigations. And I used to always say when I teach residents, the history and physical examination, you can get, I would say, 90% of the diagnosis from exactly. history and physical exam. The, exam. the example I would use is, you're walking through a shady part of town, you hear a loud bang, you have sudden pain in your knee, and you see blood. You got shot in the knee. You don't need an x-ray, you don't need an MRI. That's just on history, no physical exam. Right? Yeah, by far, the history is the most important thing. And in fact, in my office, after 40 years of doing the same thing, within 20 or 30 seconds of listening to what somebody tells me, I sort of know what's going on. And the parts that matter are, so the story, like what were you doing when you developed essentially knee pain is really what we're talking about, is pain in the knee or dysfunction. So what were you doing? How quickly did it start? Have you had problems in the past? Where is the pain? The character of it, is it sharp or is it dull? Is it there all the time? Does it come and go? That kind of stuff. Like those are the kinds of questions you're gonna be getting on the history. One of the most important questions that I think for a knee condition is how old are you? Because sure. a knee condition yep. in a 16 year old is completely different than a knee condition in a 60 year old. Even though you may present the same thing, I have pain in my knee, that age difference is huge. It has huge implications as to what could be going on with your knee. For sure. Right? And what treatment you're gonna get. And then physical exam, you're looking for, again, location of yeah. pain, how sharp is the pain, is the knee stable, is there an effusion, or is there swelling around the knee, what's the generalized alignment of the knee, and then we lead into the x-ray. So, so say someone's getting an x-ray before they're getting an MRI. Why does the x-ray matter? And why is it such a good test for us? Right. You need a set of standing x-rays for most people. Uh, and those standing x-rays, they have to include a, a number of different views. And if those x-rays show that there's narrowing of the joint space, uh, it can be either the inside compartment of the knee, that's where your knees touch, the outside compartments, or the kneecap. So there's three parts to the knee. If there's significant narrowing, and I say more than around 40% narrowing, you don't need an MRI because we got the diagnosis. What's okay, the diagnosis? so there's arthritis. So what, is, what does it mean by narrowing? Like why, why is there narrowing of the joint okay. space? What does that mean? So goes? basically what on, you see on an MRI is see the bones. The bones are calcified. X-ray. X-ray. Um, what did I say? MRI. Sorry, X-ray. So on X-ray you see the bones. The bones are calcified. And what you don't see is you don't see the cartilage. So the cartilage is black and it's between the bones and we call that the joint space. So that's the cartilage that surfaces the ends of the bone. And that's very important. I use the analogy, it's like the Teflon on the frying pan. It's what allows the surfaces to slide easily on each other. With arthritis, you get less of that cartilage. The joint space narrows. And when it's more than 40%, you don't need an MRI because we got the diagnosis. We got it from x-ray. 
history and physical. That's why the standing x-ray is so important. Because if you're lying down, there may be a space between the tibia and the fibula that isn't filled with cartilage, but you have to stand to squish them together. So make sure whenever you get an x-ray, you need to always ask for at least one view where you're standing. Right. And unfortunately, some people get sent for MRIs who have that joint space narrowing. And the MRI report comes back and says there's tears. Um, and many times, they aren't actually tears. They're degenerative changes in the meniscus uh, that have been overcalled. Very, very few meniscus tears actually occur, and they're very distinct. The pattern on the MRI, for me, is very clear. Um, but a lot of times, some of the degenerative changes are called tears, and that leads to people getting anxious, being sent to an orthopedic surgeon with the expectation that they need surgery, when they probably don't. Okay. And how, how did we get here? How, how we got here, what, where, where, you know, when we get those MRIs later after we have arthritis and we see tears in the meniscus in you and, and you're wondering if I need surgery is because I, like 25 years ago, we did scope knees for this kind of stuff. Yeah, we don't. We so don't what do you mean by that, Paul? Huh? What do you mean you scope knees? We, 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 25 years ago, even if you had arthritis and you had some kind of MRI finding that showed tears in the meniscus, you would get arthroscopy. You'd go see a surgeon who would put a camera inside your knee and a shaver and clean up that torn meniscus. And then sometime in the early 2000s, some well-done scientific studies came out that said, look, we've randomized people to getting this arthroscopy and not getting arthroscopy. And what we have found is that they're no better. That we're not doing anyone any service by performing arthroscopy on a knee that has quite a bit of arthritis with these degenerative tears in the meniscus. It took a while for that to get into, you know, yeah. mainstream of orthopedics, but now 25 years later, almost 25 years later, I think we're pretty comfortable saying that, yeah, even though the MRI says the word tear in your meniscus and you have a significant amount of arthritis, an arthroscopy probably won't help you. I think the other thing that has led to this uh, belief that MRIs are necessary is the sports world. So you'll always hear, oh, so-and-so uh, football player or something hurt his knee. Uh, we have to wait for the MRI to find out what's going on. I'm going to tell you a little secret. That we already know what's going on. As a sports physician who deals with a professional team, most of the time we know the diagnosis. And in fact, that we're waiting for the MRI is just the organization really delaying things so that they can get things in order. You yes. know, they can find a replacement player or something. So we're, we don't oh. normally absolutely need the MRI to make the diagnosis. We normally already know. Okay, that's a and little it, and behind I think, the scenes. And I think what it's led to is that some apprehension on surgeon's part because you feel pressure mm -hmm. from patients to, for people coming looking for a specific treatment. And then also for patients thinking, this is what I deserve, this is what I need. I'm a young person. Don't tell me that I have arthritis and that really I'm on the path to knee replacement. I just want to get my knee scoped and get back to my normal life, when that may not be a realistic option for them. Right. And the third thing is, is the medical legal aspect. And, that, yeah. and that's certainly yes. prominent in the United States and, and as well in Canada to some extent, is that uh, surgeons think they need to be have an MRI. I was always comfortable doing even an anterior cruciate ligament reconstruction uh, without an MRI, but today I don't think that that is the normal Standard. practice. You have to get an MRI. And you know, there are papers out there that show that an examination and a history done by an experienced physician is actually more accurate in making the diagnosis than the MRI alone. Okay. Right, because it's not a dynamic test. No. Yeah. Okay, so, so do I need an MRI? <laughs> the question, do you need an MRI? Probably not, okay? Right. Probably not. I can say if you took a population sample of all the MRIs that people get, probably you don't need an MRI. Sometimes, though, you do need an MRI. Let's get some specific situations where a knee MRI is absolutely indicated. Uh, the most common indication is a young individual with a major knee injury. And so a multi-ligament injured knee or a dislocated knee, uh, you need it for an ACL, not to make the diagnosis of the ACL injury, but more to know what other things are going on in the knee, what other joint surface damage, meniscus, cartilage, et cetera, uh, so we can plan. Um, there are some other uh, conditions. One of the most important ones is osteochondritis dissecans or osteonecrosis. So those are areas where the, there's a small segment of bone that loses its blood supply. Those are the most important ones. Yeah, I would say that. And, and in my practice, where I'm not seeing as many sports injuries, but more uh, people, older people with uh, 
knee pain, try and rule out arthritis, and the x-ray looks completely normal, but they're still having a ton of knee pain, then I'll, I'll, I will order an MRI to look for that for a sonk spontaneous osteonecrosis of the knee right. or an area of the knee that might have lost its blood supply and died and will later show up on x-ray, but initially can only show up on, on the MRI. That's one. Uh, sometimes if there's concern for a tumor or malignancy right. around the knee, uh, in young people, uh, tumors around the knee can happen in young people. It's very rare, but it can. Or uh, metastatic lesions or other neoplastic lesions around the knee, and MRI can be helpful in that setting. So these are rare, more rare instances. Anything else you can think of? I'd say the other one maybe is the lock knee, but the caveat to that is we don't want to be waiting, and I think this is a really yeah. critical point. For someone that has a knee that can't go all the way straight or can't significantly bend, and it was an acute change, it usually means something stuck and is in the way, and that could be either a loose body or a displaced meniscal tear. So two things there. Sometimes this does require an MRI, if you can get it in an expedited fashion. But this definitely should not delay you from, A, talking to your family doctor, or your family doctor referring you on to a specialist. Because this is a, a very serious condition that needs more expedited treatment. Yeah, so and, that's the bottom line. And, and, and what's the big deal? Well, you know, there's no harm done. Why not just get an MRI anyways? There's a few reasons. One, I think if you do get an MRI, you might be led down the wrong path. <laughs> Just yeah. because of the detail that's going to be presented in the report, yeah. you may be, depending on what positions you see and a chain of events that can happen, you could be led down the wrong path and in your mind get the completely wrong diagnosis about your knee just from having an MRI. So some harm can be done in that way. Great. In, in our system uh, where we practice, MRIs are not as readily available as some parts of the world. Uh, so by having a bunch of MRIs, you're kind of doing community harm because you're using up the machine when you need it for other urgent yep. things. So it's, it's a benign test in terms of you're not getting exposed to radiation and you probably won't hurt yourself getting the MRI. But it's not so benign because it may just give you a wrong diagnosis and lead you down the wrong path, ironically. Yeah, and that's the key. Right. Key thing. Yeah. Oh, now you know. I hope so, that helps. So if you've had experience with an MRI, if you've had an MRI and you're not sure exactly what the tumor is, leave a comment. Let us know what happened, what's happened to you, what's frustrating about it. Let us know. Share it with the other viewers. And now you know whether or not you need an MRI. And if you like this video, please like it. Subscribe to our channel. And that's another point. You might be very frustrated. You're like, I'm waiting so long for this MRI. Yeah. I've been waiting. I've been waiting. Whereas you might not need it. Yeah. Dr. Deacon, thank you so much for Thanks, sharing guys. your wisdom yeah. and expertise. Yeah. And remember, you are in charge of your own health. We'll see you next time.